All right, guys, welcome back to a brand new video. We are in Upper Manhattan, New York City. And if you haven't guessed already, we are on Columbia University campus. Now, everybody wants to be in New York City. It is the Big Apple. Whether you're in tech, engineering, medicine, you'll probably find a major headquarter of your dream company in the city. This is one of the most accessible Ivy Leagues on campus. So in this video, episode number 10 of the Road to Success series, we are going to take a deep dive into undergrad, grad applications, how you need to apply, and more importantly, the scholarships that Columbia has to offer for its international students. Let's get started. Now let's jump right into the ranking. So Columbia has been ranked number 12 by the US World Ranking and it is definitely a controversial topic to talk about the ranking so I'm not going to go into super details on that sitting on the campus but it has an acceptance rate of somewhere between 3-4% to 4 which is super competitive and one of the reasons I think why is because around 57,000 uh, students apply and it is one of the highest applied to Ivy Leagues in the world for some pretty good reason because everybody wants to be in New York City and this is one of the most accessible like Ivy Leagues being in the city getting research positions co-ops internships like you have a great chance to network meet people and kind of like build that communication that doesn't happen in a lot of colleges that are otherwise in like these remote areas so they admitted around 2200 students um, last year there are currently about 15,000 international students on the campus as of 2020 now this includes everything undergrad graduate students so uh, I would say Columbia is pretty good on like you know promoting diversity and making sure that there's a good group of international students on their campus now with that let's look at what they actually ask for in the application process so first off you will be using common app to apply the process is you know one portal um, and just like all of the other colleges, it does have an application fee, which is about $85. And some of the documents that they require are your school report, media report, and final report. Now, these three documents are something that your counselor has to upload in the counselor portal. You don't have to upload predicted grades, school report, media report, and your final report. All of that is uploaded by the counselor. So just keep that in mind. Um, there's a counselor letter of recommendation. Then you have uh, two teacher recommendations. Both of them are required. There's one optional LOR that you can choose to submit and they have a standardized test policy. And the best part is they clearly mention on their website that if you submit your SAT or ACT score, it will be a small consideration to your application. It won't carry a whole lot of value. So they are very clear that their test optional and if you submit your scores, it doesn't push your application a significant amount. So for those of you that, you know, um, aren't the best at maybe uh, writing these competitive tests, Columbia is like a good Ivy League dream um, option to consider. So what does it take to actually study and get admitted into Columbia? Because let's face it, to study in this campus, you definitely have to do something to stand out in your college applications. Columbia has made it very clear through their common data set, which is basically like um, this profile that every college releases for the previous year where they talk about what were the factors they used to select students in their campus. Now, if we were to take a look at Columbia's data set from last year, we can see that some of the things that they consider very important include your class rank, your academic GPA, and basically how you overall perform in your academics. If you can show all of this by performing in whichever board you're in. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be like a IB curriculum or an IGCC curriculum. Whatever you're studying, if you can show them that you've outstandingly performed well in your field, whatever was given to you, that is sufficient to show academic intellectual credibility, which is exactly what Columbia is looking for. In addition to that, they consider the application essay, which we'll get to in just a second, and letters of recommendation. You can clearly see that this mark over here, standardized tests, are only considered. They're not very important, so you can skip them. Now, non-academically, you can see that extracurriculars hold a good value, and so does personal qualities and characters. Now, to showcase you have good personal uh, qualities and character, you can make sure that you work with your counselor, your school counselor. It can be like a class teacher or your school principal if your school doesn't have an official counselor, but work with them to make sure that the letter that they submit 
holds the most value and showcases your strengths to the best of your abilities. Now with all that, let's see the two deadlines that Columbia has to offer. Now there is an early decision deadline and a regular decision deadline. The early decision has passed up until this point, so might as well work hard for the regular decision deadline. The ED was November 1st, which was a binding offer, meaning that you could only apply to one university. But for the regular decision, Columbia has a deadline of January 1st. One essay is your personal essay. This is like the common one that almost every college asks for. You just have to write it once, submit to all the colleges. Other than that, you are looking at four different essays. So Columbia offers its students one more chance to stand out in their entire application process, which is by submitting an optional research supplement. Now, when you click yes to this question in your application, a pop-up appears where you can actually add details about your research, like the research abstract, and you can add more than one. Now, the best part about this is it is an absolutely amazing way to stand out from the rest of the applicants because you're taking the additional effort to submit an optional document that Columbia has asked for. Now, if you guys have little experience or maybe just no experience in research as a high school student, which is expected, you guys can check out the Research Bootcamp Cohort number three, which the enrollment is open for right now with the early bird pricing. This is a great way to get some virtual research experience because through the end of the bootcamp, you have your own team project, you have your research abstract, your research report, and everything that you need to add into supplemental documents just like Columbia. Now, Columbia isn't the only university that asks and gives students the option to add like this research. So having some amount of research background in your profile is definitely a good thing for your overall college applications, not just Columbia. Now, it's definitely not cheap to study in a place like Columbia. So we are looking at a tuition fee of about $68,000. And with all of the cost of attendance combined, it's about $89,000, $90,000 per year if you receive no financial aid. And just to kind of roughly translate that into Indian rupees, it is roughly 75 lakh rupees per year, which is a huge amount. Again, one of the higher tuition fees that we've ever seen. But there's good news. You don't have to pay it all because Columbia very conveniently states that they provide need-based financial aid. They will meet 100% of your family's need, which basically means that by filling out one additional form, Columbia will be able to waive off up to 100% of your tuition fee. And just on average, Columbia says that the students receive about $80,000 per year um, in the form of need-based financial aid. And with what this need-based financial aid basically means is that you don't have to pay this money back. It's not a loan, it's basically just one type of scholarship. So how do you exactly apply for this need-based aid? There is a separate application called the CSS profile and you have to fill this out separately and submit it. Now remember that Columbia is need aware, which basically means that if you tell Columbia you need aid, they will consider this as part of their decision to even give you an admission or not. But they also mention that financial aid is something that is dispersed in high amounts to international students. Now, if you guys are more interested in learning about this entire application process, you guys can check out the Ivy League 101 course. It has everything with like a CSS profile walkthrough, common app walkthrough, everything and anything that you would need as an undergrad student to actually apply to Columbia and all of the other universities in the US. So that brings us to the graduate application process. And for all of my grad students, you guys will be applying through Columbia's website portal. The application fee is going to be $120. And for your deadlines, now it's important to note that there isn't just one deadline for grad students because there are different departments, different programs. The deadlines can vary, but typically they fall between January and February of 2024 for the fall 2024 intake. The next thing coming to the documents and other requirements for grad students. Now you guys will be required uh, to submit unofficial transcripts. This just means that your semester wise transcripts are enough. Columbia has also gone out of its way to mention that they do accept three year degrees, which is a great thing. They've specifically put India in the list and just like three, three year programs are, expect, are accepted as part of your undergrad you know, process. Um, that is a recommendation. You guys can submit two or three. GRE can be required. So again, this will be different department wise. So you guys need to check that. There is a hundred uh, requirement on the TOEFL or 17.5 on IELTS. And the tuition fee is 38 to $45,000. Coming back to the letters of recommendation, they specifically say that if students upload letters of recommendations on behalf of teachers, professors or research experience, they can get in trouble. So please refrain from doing anything that's unethical such as this. You're applying to a prestigious university, let's follow some ethical standards. Um, 
lastly coming to the funding so graduate students this is kind of like a very straightforward funding there is no like beating around the bush columbia just straightforward says that there are assistantships available and funding is available only to phd students so if you are coming for a master's level program you will likely not get any funding now these assistantships are uh, come in two forms the ra and ta um, RA is where you work in a lab, T is where you work with a professor to teach like an undergraduate course. Um, if you're doing a PhD program, uh, your 12 month stipend would be $45,000 and $40,000 if you have a 9 month stipend. Uh, master's students can work on campus at $21 per hour. Now this is something you can do like on the side to help support yourself. You're allowed to work up to 20 hours per week as an international student. So that's one way to kind of consider some funding. But there's something known as tuition remission for PhD students, which means that if you are getting these assistantships, which means you get this stipend, your tuition fee is already like waived off. So this stipend that you see over here listed is going to be like your pocket money or the, your living expense. Your tuition fee will be waived off and your PhD will be fully funded. All right, guys, that is all that I had for Columbia's videos. Um, if you're watching till this point, definitely hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And for this week's random question, I want to know what is your dream thing to do in New York City? Is it to visit maybe like Times Square, uh, Brooklyn Bridge, Manhattan Bridge, all of those bridges that the Bollywood movies showcase, Kaluna Ho, Kabhi Alvida Na Kena, um, or maybe it's to visit the Statue of Liberty, Columbia maybe. Put whatever it is in the comments below and I'll see you guys next week. Take care. Bye.